Ukraine. This country, as you can see here, was quite realistically one of the most important countries in the USSR. It was an agriculturally important country. It was also a militarily important country. If you take a look at the capital, Aviv, as you can see on the map, it exists along a lake and river system that goes up to the border with Belarus. In this area is where there was the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. And down here is where another nuclear plant is at risk today, in the present. Ukraine is, was, and will probably always be an important location in Eastern Europe, Britain in particular. It shares a border with Russia, Belarus, Poland, Romania, Moldova, and a couple of microstates. Looking at this map, you can see red dots in red squares. Those are locations of army groups and bases prior to the invasion of Russia. Now, the invasion of Russia into Ukraine was really, really how do I put this? Illegal? Unethical? But it wasn't. All of these army groups, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all massed along the border, even in Belarus. And they would all at once sweep in. As they swept in, they made real gains on the ground and created an atmosphere in which you was under threat, which in turn would strengthen NATO and lead to the resupply of Ukraine by the US, France, Great Britain, Germany, yes, Germany indeed, and Poland, and almost every other NATO country even Turkey would be sending their Buccaneer drones with purchase of course these aren't gifts but they are meant to secure the future of Europe from one ruled by Russian aggression now Ukraine is essential it provides food to a lot of the world Africa, North America, Russia, Europe, Asia, lots of production. And during the Cold War, as a member of USSR, it was also the primary producer of many, many things. Whenever you've heard of, say, an aircraft, there's a 50-50 shot. It was made in Ukraine. Also, Ukraine was and continues to be a source of agricultural tools and these were mostly located closer to the border with the Russian Socialist Republic in an area that would go on to be claimed by Putin at one point and then when he annexed Crimea in 2014 it would see open war in Europe, which has only become more inflamed with the invasion of Ukraine through occupied ter territories, my gosh, of Donetsk and Luhansk. Donetsk and Luhansk lie 
to the east of Kiev, the capital. And these were a key region, especially when it came to industrial production. So, Putin invades Ukraine. Twice, actually. Once he does it unofficially. Once, more recently, he does it officially with his own troops openly. But, no direct relation of war, it's a subwatch operation under Putin's narrative. But this narrative doesn't stand up. Ukraine is not run by fascists. Only one brigade of volunteers is a so-called fascist brigade. They're not Nazis. Zelensky is from Jewish heritage. And all this is happening. All of this is poured into Russian media and the trolling of Western media. But it's not believed by the West. And then you see an inpour, an influx. An influx which resupplies and helps Ukraine contain Russia. Russia continues to grind away and continues to advance. But they are faced with fiercer resistance than they expected. They expected it to go similar, but not quite as easily as the annexation of Crimea with fake elections, easily walking around in the streets, but instead things go wrong on the front lines and behind the lines. So behind the lines, Ukraine had used a European and American strategy that was developed specifically for smaller countries to be able to counter the effects of Russian aggression, other larger countries' aggression. But it was mainly tailored towards Russia after the 2014 annexation of Crimea and what was seen at the time as a massive failure to contain the Russian threat. Russia approached Kyiv and dropped paratroopers north, but they were stopped in their tracks and eventually would be forced to withdraw as the railroad lines would slid into Belarus and into Russia failed to resupply the troops. The paratroopers which were seen as some of the most well-trained, well-equipped groups in the Russian military, located just north of Kyiv, where they were dropped in, failed to hold and were largely pushed back with large casualties. Ukraine, at this point, is succeeding. As you can see, from the blackness around. These are areas where Russian troops were and continue to be sanctioned. But Ukraine persisted. And now, despite nuclear threat here in this region, there is a push, an offensive in the south, which is reversing some of Russia's advances, while in the north, Russia is contained, still possessing a large amount of Ukrainian territory, but they do not control it all. Ukraine continues to be an important, important country, and it always will be. Ukraine as an entity has the capacity 
to wage war with a huge major power, Russia. Why? Well, they have been an important aspect of the USSR. And then, they continue to be so, going into the 21st century, and are proving today their spirit, their world power, and their ability to defy. This ability to defy is not limited to Ukrainians. It's been seen time and time again when a smaller nation loses sovereignty because of, ultimately, the thievery of a larger nation. That's it. That's all it is. War is thievery writ large and then sanctioned by countries. That's all it is. And that is what what Russia wants. They want a Russianized Ukraine fully dependent and within the sphere of influence so that in the future they may seek territory to the north in modern day Lithuania, Estonia, and Latvia, which will be tougher nuts to crack, even then the incredibly tough to crack Ukraine.